Hey everyone, before we get into this video, I am giving away a copy of Monster Hunter Rise and two $20 Nintendo Switch eShop gift cards. In fact, we're going to sweeten that pot and add a $99 Nintendo Switch, PlayStation, or Xbox gift card to that pile for a total of four winners. Why am I doing that? Well, I actually announced it in a video that has not come out yet. Uh, so, whatever. Here we go. Now, let's get into the video. So... We've been talking a lot about Switch Pro, right? I mean, this I, I don't hide that fact. I don't try to pretend that it's not happening. Uh, we don't have anything from Nintendo officially confirming or leaking the Switch Pro. But we do have several widely considered reputable. I know we've had a video in the past talking about how everything's a rumor and nobody can verify any of this information. We're kind of left just to believe the people that say it. Uh, but what's nice about someone like Takahashi Machizuki, who's talking again over at Bloomberg, it's it, it, it's interesting because it gives us an ability to at least look up someone's track record with their reports to kind of see if there's some credibility there. Now, Takahashi Machizuki obviously would not be hired by Bloomberg if he doesn't have a, a pretty good track record. But when it comes specifically to when he talks about Nintendo stuff, it's kind of hit or miss. All right. Sometimes he's right. Sometimes he's wrong, which really puts him in line with every other uh, leaker slash person out there that we can verify information from or at least verify their history of information from. Uh, but it is what it is. We're going to go with what he has to say, because you know what? Uh, he works at a major outlet. And if he was always lying about this stuff, he would likely lose his job. So here's his new article. It says Nintendo targets a record year in Switch game sales. Now, you might just be like, okay, so whatever, just talking about Nintendo game sales. There's actually more information in here talking specifically about Switch Pro or Switch XL or new Nintendo Switch, whatever Nintendo decides to moniker their new system and reconfirmation that it's coming this year. So it says Nintendo company is gearing up for record software and Switch sales in the coming year. A much stronger performance than investors are projecting, according to the company's partners and suppliers. The Kyoto-based Nintendo is planning for sales of its signature Switch game console to be flat or slightly higher in the fiscal year ending March 2022, boosted by the introduction of a version with an OLED display. According to executive at allies, including component suppliers, software publishers, and retailers. What's interesting is he's now kind of narrowing down where the information is coming from. It's coming from the executives at these places, including component suppliers, software publishers, and retailers. So not like people on the floor, not people you know working the, the manufacturing lines or grunt game developers, from actual executives in the top shelf. So what's nice is, for him, if these are his sources, their sources, these sources aren't going to get fired for, for giving this information out. This information is given out intentionally if it comes from up there. I just, I just want to point this out, that when the information comes from executives, a.k.a. the top brass at a company, that lets you know they want this information out there. So they want people to know an OLED display is coming. They want people to know that there are amazing games in the works. They want people to know that this system's coming out this year. Okay, so this is this is getting away from if we can trust this person, this information is out there intentionally. Intentionally, the executives want it out there. All right. So a series of marquee game releases is expected to drive software sales next year to 250 million units, far more than the record 205 million units forecast for the current year. According to the partners and suppliers, speaking anonymously as the plans are not public, analysts have projected software sales would fall next year. Some of the suppliers have been briefed while others established their own forecast based on orders. A Nintendo spokesperson declined to comment. Nintendo shares reversed early morning losses and finished up 1.6% in Tokyo on Monday. The coronavirus outbreak was at first a break and then an accelerant for Nintendo, choking its supply and logistics before triggering a demand surge with global lockdowns driving people to seek entertainment and escape. The company's Animal Crossing New Horizons turned into the ideal virtual hangout for stress relieving juicing switch sales and hastening the transition from packaged software to digital downloads. Nintendo will need to start the next fiscal year without Animal Crossing and the pandemic, but that will be offset by much stronger blockbuster software lineup and new hardware, says Circuit Toto of game consultancy Content Games, Inc. 
Nintendo plans to release a revised version of the Switch in the later half of this year with a larger and better display as well as an upgraded graphics when the hybrid console is plugged into a TV set. Bloomberg News has reported, so this is referencing his prior report, the company makes some of the biggest blockbuster games on its platform, which contributes significantly to profit and also spur hardware adoption. Much of this year's lineup of new games remains unannounced. The Switch and Switch Lite continue to sell well, due to due in part to poor supply at Sony Corp's PlayStation 5 and Microsoft Corp's Xbox Series X released in November, according to Asterisk Advisory Japan's David Gibson. But the lack of visibility around Nintendo's upcoming game slate has promoted skepticism about the company sustaining its recent success. With or without an upgraded Switch, Nintendo's hardware sales would probably decrease in the year from April, according to Bloomberg Intelligence's Math Canterman. Nintendo's ability to fulfill demand for the Switch will be challenged by the same global chip supply bottleneck that has troubled its rivals. Beyond securing silicone from the likes of the Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, the Switch maker also faces scarcity of more generic parts, like display driver integrated circuits and Bluetooth modules, people familiar with its operation said. Component suppliers said shortages would persist at least until June, and the situation may not improve for the rest of the year. Makers of NAND flash memory, the media in which packaged Switch software is sold, are preparing more units for the coming fiscal year than they supplied in the current one. The people involved in the supply chain said, Software developers similarly are prioritizing the Switch for their upcoming game releases, as the console is almost certain to surpass the 100 million units sold threshold assuring a large audience of potential customers. Nintendo had sold 80 million Switch devices as of the end of 2020. Games announced for this year so far include several Pokemon titles and popular third-party games, such as Fall Guys by Mediatonic. Though Nintendo's release schedule for the second half of this year remains vacant, it delivered a positive surprise by announcing Splatoon 3 for 2022 last month said Asterisk Advisory Gibson, indicating a strong game pipeline for the long term. The Switch is in the middle of its life cycle, said Nintendo President Shichiro Furukawa last month. So, again, this is all interesting stuff because we have to consider that uh, there is a lot of wondering about what's happening with Nintendo. Like, if you're in the financial space, there, there's a lot of just guesswork going on because Nintendo is entering some uncharted territory pretty soon. The Switch is likely, very likely, I say more than likely, going to pass 100 million units in 2021. Uh, That's a very interesting prospect because Nintendo only really has three platforms that have hit that plateau. So you have the Wii, you have the original Game Boy, and then you have obviously the Nintendo DS. Now look, to suggest the Switch is going to surpass Game Boy uh, and become Nintendo's second best-selling system, I think is pretty much within reach in the next couple of years. The question is, can it obviously reach the heights of the Nintendo DS and potentially the PlayStation 2 and become the best-selling video game hardware ever? And that's going to be largely dependent on Nintendo keeping the library fresh. Obviously, with big games like Splatoon 3 still coming, next year is going to be another big year for Nintendo. You know, Nintendo has this habit in the past, at least under prior presidents to have a kind of software drying cycle where for almost two years the games will just vanish heading into the release of a new system because they're kind of holding everything back for the new system which makes sense in some regards obviously it made sense to hold back breath of the wild on wii u and wait for it to launch with switch but at the same point it also leads to sales declining to a point that nintendo is actually starting again from ground zero see PlayStation doesn't have to do this. They, when, when they bring out PlayStation 5, the prior system is still selling really, really well. This is an intentional way to slowly move the market into the next generation while creating high demand for their products based on the satisfaction that people have with their prior products. Nintendo, meanwhile, has changed the game so much between Wii and Wii U and then obviously heading to Switch before that GameCube. Uh, you look at even dual screen, handheld touchscreen systems to, from non-dual screen handheld touchscreen systems there's been just a lot of, of massive changes in nintendo strategy that creates market instability for them where nintendo is constantly trying to chase lightning in a bottle now yes they actually attained lightning in a bottle again but 
the way they did it this time doesn't feel gimmicky like the motion control ways of the Wii, and it doesn't feel out of touch with actual long-haul consumer demand to want to play games on the go while conveniently playing them on your TV with traditional controllers. Nintendo is on to a seemingly high-demand product where the demand shouldn't go anywhere so long as there is software to play. Now, yes, people are going to want refreshed systems. Yes, it would be great to basically get rid of most of that bezel on the Switch, have a 7-inch OLED display, even without, even without upgraded hardware on the internals. If they just released a refreshed Switch and just called it a Switch XL, and all it was was a bigger OLED panel, that would still be a welcome addition to the market. I think there might be some disappointment in that, but he does continue to suggest in this article that people are telling him that there's going to be upgraded graphics, whatever that means. Obviously, we hope it's more than just a, a little chip in the in a dock, like that refresh dock that enables 4K upscaling uh, in a very, very, like, we, we can't dismiss the fact that when you talk about upgraded visuals, it could literally just be a very minor upscaler, not DLSS 2.0. Not, uh, you know, we got to remember, Takashi Machizuki is not the person that said we are getting DLSS. He mentioned 4K output. He didn't mention DLSS. That's actually coming from other sources that claim to have people using dev units and stuff. So there's a lot of information out there, and it's hard to dissect what to believe. But remember, if this system is not, you know, significantly more powerful, if it doesn't have DLSS 2.0, that has nothing to do with Takahashi Machizuki. He's simply saying it's going to have a bigger screen, 7 inches, OLED display from Samsung. It's going to come out this year, and it's going to be able to output a 4K signal at the end. Remember, Tegra X1 can output a 4K signal. It just isn't advantageous for Nintendo to support it because the upscaling is pretty bad. So... We'll see what happens. I am pretty excited by the prospect here about what this could mean, about the software lineup. Obviously, he's hearing that third-party companies, I'm presuming, not Nintendo, but third-party companies are prioritizing. You know, He says it logically makes sense to, but also he's hearing that third-party companies are prioritizing software right now for the Switch, which is interesting when we live in the world of PlayStation 5 and Series X, when everyone thought third parties would start to abandon Switch. It seems like they might be gravitating more to it than ever before. After all, we just got Apex Legends out. I know, some people think it's rough. I haven't played it yet. I plan to play it on a live stream here eventually. Uh, so then we could check that out, and I can give you my honest thoughts on, hey, you know what, is this a little bit too rough for Switch, or is it passable? You know, my expectations are always low on big AAA third-party ports from the visual perspective because I realize there's a lot of sacrifices to get it running on Switch. There's a lot of sacrifices to get The Witcher 3, a lot of sacrifices to get Doom Eternal. There's going to be a lot of sacrifices for Apex Legends and other third-party games as well. But, but is the gameplay solid enough that those sacrifices are worth it? And to me, that's where you find out, is a game truly good? If you strip away some of the visual fidelity of a game, is the raw gameplay underneath truly good enough for a good game? I, I think the Switch is almost like a proving ground. Are your games good enough from a gameplay perspective where the visuals are, don't matter? For Doom Eternal, that was absolutely yes. The gameplay was still thrilling on Nintendo Switch. I am Nathaniel Robojance from Nintendo Prime. I want to thank you guys so much for tuning in. Sorry I'm not on camera and some other stuff. We're just doing some gameplay, voiceover, all that stuff. I... My uh, children broke my camera. I, I do have a new camera on order. Should be here later this week, hopefully in time for the podcast on Wednesday. Uh, but, yeah, thank you guys. Uh, you guys have been lovely. Lots of support. Uh, the next video I have in the works right now is actually a video I recorded uh, last week. So I will be on camera for that one with my old one camera. But it's okay. Rip the Lumix G7. Can I get an F down in the comments for that? All right, folks. I'll catch you guys in the next video.